From Hodor to KOTOR, nerds are passionate about a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us today, we have Caldwell Tanner. Hello. Siobhan Thompson. And Nate Dern. What a be glasses crew we have here. <laughs> bunch um, of, bunch of nerdlingers. Here. Fucking love screens, what can I say? <laughs> I read so many books in the dark as a child. I have a stack of statements here about the properties that are nearest and dearest to your heart. False statements, in fact. It's up to you to find the thing that's wrong with the statement and correct me. All your corrections must be preceded by the phrase, um, actually, and you can interrupt me at any time. Is that all clear? Good yes. Very. Our first statement here concerns Star Wars. C-3PO's first encounter with a member of the Skywalker family occurs not when he meets Luke Skywalker on the desert planet of Tatooine, but when he meets Princess Leia Organa aboard her Alderaan cruiser. Um, actually... <laughs> God, I'm so tired already. <laughs> C-3PO's first encounter with a Skywalker is when Anakin builds him. Co you're correct enough in that he encounters Anakin Skywalker first, but he's not built by Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> he's fixed and reassembled. So we get like a third of a point? How does this no, work? No, no, you get a point, and oh, all nice. of us just dodge the screamings of a thousand <laughs> fanboys on the internet. And We're fangirls. And fangirls. Thank you. How does, like, like later in the movie when, like, Darth Vader like runs into C-3PO. How does he never just be like, holy shit, my whole <laughs> robot! I yeah. guess if you had a car and then you became a space Nazi and then you saw your old car again, you wouldn't be like, oh shit, that's my I fucking my... Ford. Maybe yeah, it but... would if you were like yeah. really into it. Maybe yeah. so. If mm -hmm. your car had like a British accent and a, a very personality. particular yeah. British accent. <laughs> and like extensions. 9,000 different languages. Oh, Carsby, I missed you. <laughs> <laughs> I missed you too, Space Hitler. <laughs> and a conversation like this at Pixar is how the movie Cars was made. Oh, wow. Exactly. <laughs> We've strayed way off course from Star Wars <laughs> to Cars, um, but that is one point for Caldwell, who's already so exhausted of this game. So I know, this is, my whole this is life too much. This. Yeah. It's all led to this moment. <laughs> <laughs> Dead eyes. <laughs> all right, on to our next statement here. This is about Harry Potter. Of the many shops and storefronts in Diagon Alley, such as the Three Broomsticks, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, and Ollivander's Wand Shop, perhaps none is more important than Gringotts, the Wizard Bank. This highly guarded establishment is run by goblins, and it is where Harry first realizes the enormous fortune he has inherited from his parents, Lily and James Potter. Siobhan? Um, actually, Three Broomsticks is not in Diagon Alley. That's correct. Wow. It's in uh, Hogsmeade. That's correct. The Three Broomsticks is in Hogsmeade, not in Diagon Alley uh. in London. That would be crazy. <laughs> wow. What are you thinking? I feel like there's probably a restaurant or bar called Three Broomsticks in Diagon Alley. There's uh, probably more than one. It's just like a set. Three Broomsticks is a chain. It's got yeah. <laughs> We're moving on to question three, which is about Game of Thrones. Brienne of Tarth and Sandor the Hound Clegane, both knights of Westeros and at times members of... Um, actually, Brienne of Tarth is not a knight of Westeros. She is a lady uh, from a house I cannot remember at the moment, but she is technically a lady and not a knight. That is correct. There is a more specific answer if anyone can chime in with, uh, with more specifics. Um, actually, she's a knight of the North, but not a knight of... The whole country? <laughs> no, that is uh, that is Sub not night. what we're going for here. <laughs> Sub night. Nate, you want to take a uh, wild step? Sure. <laughs> oh. Oh, the light's not working. Wait. Believe in yourself. Magic. <laughs> there we go. Ah! <laughs> um, actually, she's a lady of House Tarly. That is not correct. Uh, it is correct that that uh, Brienne of Tarth is not a knight, but it's also true that Sandor Clegane is also not a knight. Whoa! Neither are knights. You are the most correct here, so we're going to Hot give you the dog. point. Uh, are we are we all sexist that we immediately <laughs> well, thought that the woman wasn't a knight, but well, the man was? Well, but they was? talk about it all the time. Yes. Yeah, how Brienne like is not. not. Yeah. yeah, and they it's like, I'm very rarely talk about. Him. I mean, he has a little bit right. of that sort of like, oh, fuck off with your rules, I'm not a knight. <laughs> right. don't, don't call me sir. Yeah, exactly. But like, weird that like, in this universe where no, everyone fucks every rules, mm -hmm. right? It's just like, ah, oh, we don't need that, oh, whatever, we'll do this. Yeah, I'll sleep with my sister, this doesn't matter. Like, every, <laughs> every legal and social moray is just uh -huh. like, gone. But the one thing is like, a oh, woman knight? Yeah. <laughs> no, crazy. thank you. <laughs> How would that even work? Look, no, as an English that. woman and as a woman woman, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> this next question 
is about StarCraft. Oh no. StarCraft. The mighty Protoss, psionic warriors from the homeworld of Ire, have vast armies to wage war against the Terrans and Zerg, including their fearsome zealots, their AI-piloted dragoons, and their invisible Dark Templar. Um, Neat. Actually, uh, I've played StarCraft, and it's very fun. That is true. <laughs> Uh, yes, that's true. My, uh, the question seemed to imply that it was a, a slog of lore that yeah. is no fun at all. That's what I thought. Uh, in point of it. fact, it's a great game. Yeah. Uh, and yes. Thank you. Um, actually, I believe the Zealots are a Zerg unit. Nope, nope. The Zealots are uh, Protoss units. Shit. Um, actually, the Templars are Terran. Nope. I've not played this game. I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very fun game, as Nate just informed you. Do you like clicking? You know what? I love it. Yeah. Th think Are about you fast that. Fast at clicking? Like Can you click fast? Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Do you like memorizing the most efficient uh, resource allocation for no. early gameplay? No, I don't. And then doing that every time? No. Well, you'll love it. <laughs> 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 the Dragoons are not piloted by AI. They are, in fact, piloted by the uh, basically the pieces and uh, consciousness of fallen Protoss uh, soldiers. Wow. That's if, uh, so dumb. if it gets, yeah, if a, if a soldier's wounded, sort of like beyond repair, they get basically like melted down and poured into one of these robots and then pilot that forever. Um, actually, that's cool as hell. And this brings us to our first shiny question. Now, shiny questions, mm. like shiny Pokemon, are just like regular questions. They're worth the exact same amount. They're just a little bit different and a little bit rarer. This question concerns HP Lovecraft. And this is a little thing we call Spelling Bee. Spelling in English is hard enough as it is, but spelling in fantasy mm. stuff is even harder. There's <laughs> apostrophes and weird extra letters and shit like that. Mm. So I am going to give you a word, and it will be up to you to uh, spell the word. Your word is... Relié. Relié? Correct. Relié. Nate. Relié. R-E-A-L space <laughs> Y-A-Y. Real yay. <laughs> that is a real yay, uh, which is uh, a correct spelling of a different phrase, um, but points for creativity, wait, what you mean? No points. Oh. Uh, All right. Siobhan. Real yay. Ah. Uh, apostrophe L Y H. No. Oh. Ooh. Real yay. R apostrophe. L Y E H. That is correct. Oh! oh! Our, the dancer! <laughs> R apostrophe L Y E H. Yeah. Real yay. Real yay! <laughs> and that's a point for Caldwell for his spelling of real yay. I'm just waiting for someone to like come out from that corner and just beat me up. Yeah. <laughs> that's the prize. Who's that fair. guy who knew where that apostrophe went? <laughs> Last episode, we made a couple of mistakes ourselves. Here they are. At Lemongella says red shirts have a different connotation by this era of the show. Their command in Star Trek The Next Generation. That's right. At John O'Fawcett, Sideshow Luke Perry did not attend any college whatsoever, and it's unclear if Sideshow Raheem did either. Very good. One point for you. This next statement is about Ender's Game. Ender's Game. Ender Wiggins' two older siblings, Valentine and Peter, become the most powerful political entity on the planet Earth by pretending to be two adults named Demosthenes and Locke and overthrowing the world government through a military coup. Um, Caldwell. Actually, Ender's sister's name is Victoria? Nope. Okay. No wrong answers. Um, actually, one is older and one is younger? Nope. They are two older siblings. Um, Nate. Actually, I think one of them pretends to be a journalist or something, and then, so it's not a military coup, it's like uh, maybe more of a misinformation campaign, uh, That's like co that. That's correct enough to, I'm gonna give mm -hmm. you the point. Okay. It's not a military coup, they just essentially write a bunch of blog posts that are so logical and persuasive that everyone just agrees to follow them. Right, yeah. Which is the most insane part of Ender's <laughs> Game. It's like a Reddit wet dream is what it is, you know? I'm glad we fixed the internet and that's not a problem anymore. <laughs> Questions. <laughs> we have a video guest here who's going oh. to read this next one. Hi, I'm Weird Al Yankovic, and here's a lie about me. You know, I, I've written a lot of songs about food, uh, so many in fact that at one point, my record label released an entire compilation album called The Food Album, with songs like Spam, Grapefruit Diet, um, and actually, I Love Grapefruit Rocky Road. Diet is not one of the songs on that album. 
Uh, that is correct. Grapefruit Diet is not a song on the Food Album. It is a song that Weird Al wrote, uh, but it didn't come out <laughs> until Running With Scissors, which was several years after the Food Album was released. Whoa, so you knew that was a Weird Al song about food, the but food you album, knew it was not on the Food Album? The Food Album was the first album I ever bought with my own money. Wow, <laughs> that's <Dweeb>. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Caldwell, you've reached the point where the other confessions have turned on you. <laughs> you you've truly outdweaved the other dweebs. <laughs> well, the proudest little boy in school. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a quiz that I'm not that ashamed to lose. I feel like I'm on like a curve where I was ashamed and then excited and now I'm ashamed again. Yeah, yeah you want to get the exact amount of points in this game. Right. I do feel like I might send this to all of my uh, bullies to just show them that I'm not that big you of a nerd. There's a greater evil out there. <laughs> uh -huh. You're wasting your time on me. <laughs> Our next question is about the His Dark Materials series. Oh, wow. Mm. Lyra Bellaqua's demon, Pentelamon, is an animal companion capable of changing shape and in some ways represents Lyra's soul. In Lyra's world, people's demons change shape all the time to reflect their mood and personality until the person dies. At which, Damn it! Uh, <laughs> Five words um, are actually, uh, they only change until they hit puberty, and then they stay as one animal. Unless, occasionally, very rarely, somebody's animals keep changing through their entire lives, but for the vast majority of people, they stick. Lyra's is a mink, I believe. That so. is far too much information, but we'll still only give you one point. That is correct. Uh, the, uh, the demon is fixed in its shape once you hit puberty. Nice. I think it's a marten. Oh yes, you're right, it's a fine month. Take her point away! <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like this comes from some just sort of general British sensibility? Yeah, we do deal like, we specialize early in England. <laughs> uh, whether True. it's uh, soul animals or... A-levels. Uh, A-level subjects. <laughs> our next question is our second shiny question. So for this one, I'm going to give you the topic, and the first person to buzz in will get the option to, to participate here. The topic is weapons and gadgets. Caldwell is the first to Damn buzz it. in. <laughs> okay, this is a game called Technical Difficulties. Now, all these gizmos and gadgets uh, are from the same universe, except for one of them. And it's up to you to identify the one that does not belong. Um, I'm pretty sure it's this one. I think this is from Star Trek. That's correct. <laughs> uh, great timing. That's correct. Uh, that is from Star Trek. Mm -hmm. The rest of these are obviously from... Oh, right, because it's the phaser and it detaches. <laughs> Come on. Uh, are, you able to, are you able to name the other things that are up here? Obviously, these are from Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I think the lightsaber gives it away. Well, this is the bowcaster. That's Chewbacca's bowcaster. That's correct. That's a lightsaber. That's correct. This is Han Solo's blaster, I assume? Yeah. Um, even though I'm pretty sure this is just a lightsaber with a gun hey, come on, man. <laughs> we got a bunch in here. <laughs> this one is tricky, though. It is tricky. Because it's just a kickball. No. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> is it supposed to represent something? It or? is. Um, do y'all know? It's, isn't it the planet from the last movie that they used to blow up? No, with? it's much uh, simpler and dumber than that. Oh. Oh, it's um, the force. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, supposed to be a Gungan boom. Oh, shit! <laughs> uh, uh, that is, of course, the uh, weapon of the Gungans, little energy spheres. I thought maybe that was the thing that Boss Nass gives Obi-Wan at the end of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, we're not perfect either. If you notice something that we got wrong on the show, you can correct us by tweeting at the handle on the screen. The first person to correct us will get one point. This is about Lord of the Rings. Ooh. Anduril, which means Flame of the West, was the name of the sword wielded by Elendil during the last alliance of elves and men. Once broken, Elendil's son Isildur used the broken handle shard of Anduril to cut the One Ring from Sauron's hand. 3,000 years later, it was reforged and given to Aragorn, son of Arathorn. Nate. Um, actually, it's the flame of the southwest. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, the, it oh, is... you're thinking of Moe's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gonna make a dumb airline joke. <laughs> I well, almost did, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's Flame of the North. It is not Flame of the North. <laughs> um, actually, Flame of the East. Nope, nope. It is, uh, it is indeed the Flame of the West. Um, actually, the Flame of the Southwest Airlines. <laughs> uh, no, the correct correction here is that the sword wasn't called Anduril until it was reforged. Uh, Before oh that, it was called 
Narso. Wow. And the shards of Narso. Now that's pedantic. That is pedantic and Vicky. I, I like wholly it. I admit like it. that. Got about it. Wholly, wholly admit that's it. Good. That's that good. is uh, definitely the pickiest question that we have here. That's but good. you know what? If someone got it, it would have been so, so sweet. I'm sorry. Twelve-year-old me would have gotten it so <laughs> fast. <laughs> Our next question is about Dragon Ball Z. Mm. Dragon Ball Z. In Dragon Ball Z, character names follow peculiar patterns of references and puns. Saiyans are all named after vegetables, Namekians are named after musical instruments and snails, and gods of destruction are named after types of underwear. Um, actually, it's pronounced Saiyan. All right. I don't know if that was the question, but... All right. Fucked that's up, a, no, so. you know what? That's fine. <laughs> if I didn't, if you didn't do it, thousands <laughs> of other people would, so that's fine. I, just, I got your uh, back. Um, actually... Vegeta is not named after a vegetable, but all vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> that is technically true, but still named after a vegetable. Mm. <laughs> That's the only thing that I remember about Dragon Ball Z. Actually, I believe that the... Are you talking about the Gods of Destruction? Yes, the Gods of Destruction. From Dragon Ball Z Super? Yeah, sure, man. I, I mean, no, this I'll, is look, man, it's, this is your show. I'll, yeah. be, I'll be honest. I, I don't know that much about Dragon Ball Z. Okay, if you're talking about the gods of destruction, they're named after, at least one of them is named Lord Beerus, so that's probably named after alcohol, I guess, and not women's underwear. <laughs> um, actually. <laughs> uh, you put the um actually at the end, but I'll go ahead and count it. You are correct. Uh, uh, the gods of destruction are named after alcoholic beverages, uh, such as Campari, Cognac, and Mojito. Also, Biru. Um, Bulma's family are named after underwear. Uh, Bulma, Dr. and Mrs. Briefs, and Trunks. All following the underwear naming oh, scheme. Oh, Mr. Toriyama. <laughs> you dog. This is the first property we've had a question about that I've been completely unfamiliar with. So it sounded did very, this, all of this sounded very silly. Did this clear anything <laughs> up? Yeah, I'm very dismissive of this. The things that I'm into yeah. are cool. This is dumb. Well, I do think I've objectively put out like the most ridiculous way to describe Dragon Ball Z. No, like to be fair, tales. it's just a bunch of people fighting. It's a very dumb show. It's very silly. Oh. The all main right. character's friend is a pig. Just yes. like Moana. Yes, very yes. similar. Well, once again, we've gotten off topic to discuss children's animated movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, do you have any questions about those? Because I'm ready. We now move on to our next and final shiny question. As before, this will be a question for one person only, um, though someone else may be able to swoop in and, uh, and steal, steal the point if uh, you're, the person is wildly inaccurate. Very good? Everyone feeling good? Wow. Oh. Mr. Winner over here, oh, you're well, pretty confident. I'm making a fucking heel turn. Oh, <laughs> he's too confident. Y'all have fun. Everyone hates him. He's skipping backwards around the fucking diamond. I want to be the one sitting in the back going, I know the answer. <laughs> oh, well, you embarrass yourself. Oh, an easy one. Yawn. <laughs> Your topic is mythology. Come on. <laughs> I mean, let's see. <laughs> Okay, Siobhan, we're going to play a game here that we call Fictionary. Now, I'm going to give you the name of a monster. It'll be up to you to draw that oh, monster. Dear. Now you don't. Nobody doesn't, needs to see this. It doesn't have to be a good drawing. We have to see in your drawing okay. some of the key elements that define that monster. Great. Caldwell and Nate uh, both have smaller whiteboards. Um, they'll be doing the drawing at the same time. If you, uh, if you wildly screw up, if one of them has it right, they'll be able to swoop in and get the point. Great. But you'll have first dibs, basically. Great. Feeling good? No. Great. Siobhan, I would like you to please draw me a manticore. <gasps> yes. Begin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Off to a confident start. <laughs> Spending an awful lot of time on the paws. <laughs> Ta -da! It's a manticore. Can you tell me your description of what a manticore yes, is? Yes, the front half of a lion and then the back half of a scorpion. You're halfway there. You're the, that is mostly correct. The manticore also has wings, and the oh. manticore also has many, many rows of tiny, tiny, sharp teeth. So Caldwell, why don't you come up and let me see, let's see your version of a manticore. Okay, um, I think I based it more on what it looks like in Game of Thrones. Okay. Which is just a scorpion. Um, 
with like a tiny old oh, man face. Okay, this picture seems to be largely devoted to me saying I don't know how to pronounce Saiyan. Um, well, I figured that was worth mentioning again. Sure, great. Yeah. And also you say trap is dumb well, that's at the, the bottom there. That's saying that. And then this is mostly just a scorpion with a with a beard face, is that correct? Yeah, I thought it was just like, because I, I heard the word man, uh -huh. and then, I don't know, scorpions are cool. So. Okay. I figured I'd put that in there. All right, I'm inclined to take away points uh, from you, but uh, uh, we'll, Do it. we'll leave it as <laughs> is. <laughs> we'll leave it as is. Uh, this is not a more accurate manticore. All right, Nate, can, can we take a look at your drawing? I have this. Uh, it is a line that says, I'm a cat with the hair of a lion. Mm -hmm. uh, a cat with the hair of a lion, truly a fearsome beast. Unfortunately, it's only one of the things we're looking for, which is the hair of a lion. <laughs> I love the answer. Uh, I, I think Siobhan, though, remains the most accurate here. See we'll that. give Siobhan the point that. with two out of four features. It looks like Caldwell's got this on lock, but that doesn't mean we don't have time for everyone to embarrass themselves. That's because, as always, our final question concerns real life skills. <laughs> California, the state you all live in, will elect a new governor next year. Even though we're more than a year away, several people have already announced their candidacy, including Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom, former Speaker of the State Assembly Antonio Villaraigosa, and the current LA Mayor Eric Garcetti. Nate. Uh, um, actually, Siobhan doesn't live in California. <laughs> <laughs> she flies in every day on the back of a manticore That's from true. England. That's true. God, I wish that were true. Unfortunately, uh, California, uh, Siobhan does live here oh, in okay. California. That makes more sense than my answer. Um, actually, Eric Garcetti isn't running again. Uh, that is correct. There is no again. Though many suspect that Garcetti will run, he has not officially announced his candidacy as of the taping of this. We'll see by the time this releases whether or not it will happen. He hasn't said that he's not running, but he hasn't officially declared his candidacy. The other two have. Ah, Victory right. by default. <laughs> That's the way I like it, baby! And with that lesson in civics, this ends our episode of All Actually. With Caldwell <laughs> at seven points, Siobhan with three, Nate with one. And that's it for this episode of Um Actually. Join us next time for more hyper-pedantic corrections on Um Actually. <laughs> <laughs>